So good evening, everyone. This is the Economic Development Commission meeting for Wednesday, May 15th. And in attendance is Inga Hotelling, the chair. Greg Diley. Kim Sporfani. Serena Fuller. And at this point, we do not have a quorum. So fortunately, we're going to be able to still get things done because we're not going to be doing a lot of voting. And first, I'd like to introduce Marissa Cook Obigon and Angie Simone, who are here to do a presentation in regards to the new Southwick Land Trust. So if you want, you can come up and join us. And Bert, you can come join us too at this point. Um, we have pretzels filled with peanut butter and <laughs> carrot, <laughs> carrot cake, good. cream cheese, little goodies too. So after your presentation, feel free to take some home with you. <laughs> so has anyone received the postcard? Yes. I did today. You did? Yes, today. I did, yeah. And do they were they sent out to businesses as well? They were sent out to every post office box and mailbox in uh, Southwick. Oh. So I think that's mm -hmm. staggered though. I think three, that's uh, the course yeah. of three days. Yes, yeah, like I get my mail today. I didn't see it. Mm -hmm. Beautiful postcard. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, thank thank you. Really jumped out. Thank you. Thank you. So take it away, ladies. Yeah. Good evening, uh, folks. Thank you for having us here. Um, I'll actually give the floor to Angie. And I'll just kind of so uh, <laughs> I'm not sure if you're familiar with land trusts, um, but here in Southwick, um, we are a, this is our first land trust in Southwick, and we're brand new. So um, we are a nonprofit, non-governmental organization, and we're, we're just community volunteers. So our focus is to conserve important ecological, scenic, historical, agricultural land, and to promote promote uh, more appreciation for open space while providing accessible recreational opportunities for all. So that's kind of like our mission statement. And um, we want to protect our rural heritage and its diverse ecology. So um, this Saturday is our first kickoff uh, event and we're going to be doing um, a specific up. Say that uh, fast three yeah. times. <laughs> Selfless <laughs> with us. <That's> <laughs> yeah. um, we're going to start at nine o'clock at the Daily Grind, and everyone's going to kind of meet there. We have donuts and coffee for everybody. And then um, we're going to assign different routes for people to go kind of um, spiff up their areas and just mm -hmm. spiff up different roads. I need it the most. Sounds great. I wish I could be there. I committed to chest phone yeah. track volunteer. Right? Mm -hmm. We have a car show in the city. I'm going to. I'm working on it. Mm -hmm. We'll work with the future with multiple events in the future. Are there particular roads that you're really targeting? Mm -hmm. so yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right now, we're, no, we're going to focus on College Highway. Okay. Cleaning up garbages? Um, yes, on the okay. side of the road. Yes. And then are the rotaries to do that? Yep, the road, we're, we're partnering with the okay. rotary, and we're also partnering with the Great Global Cleanup, a national organization that does this in towns all over the country. Um, so, yeah, we're going to focus primarily this time on College Highway, um, some little roads off of College Highway. Depending on how many people we get, we'll add more. Um, yeah, we've seen consultants doing this. We're not really sure which. How are you promoting it? Is it this, this postcard here? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Facebook. <laughs> you're on Facebook also. You can go to our website. Oh, our website is southwicklandtrust.org. Um, so, yeah, like Angie said, we've been promoting on social media via our website. This mailer is. Um, going out today. Well, I think it started arriving in mailboxes in town yesterday. It will be today and then tomorrow. They mentioned kind of three days to cover all of the mailboxes in town and PO boxes. Um, today, we also did an interview at Mass Appeal WLP Studios. Mm -hmm. So that's online now. It's aired a few times today. So we'll be promoting that as well. Um, 
We've had some flyers up around That's town. Cool. And we've also just been going around to boards. Though we're a non-governmental entity, we do believe in partnership. Um, and it's important if something is for the common good of Southwick to create connection with boards like yourselves. Um, Economic Development Commission, there's a lot that dovetails I see with with land conservation and recreational opportunities and making Southwick a viable place to live in going into the future. So, um, yeah. Anything else that you want to add about anything? No, we just hope for uh, support and partnership with EDC. And all. Mm. I know um, this the cleanup especially benefit, benefits everybody in town, mm -hmm. businesses and homeowners. So it would be a fun event. We're looking to do something probably in the spring of next year where it's going to be, one of the ideas was flowers or blooms in Southwick and have the local merchants do a contest to take pride in their, their, their storefront. And maybe take a broom out there every now and then and sweep up and take pride in regards to doing flower boxes. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's definitely a dovetail and we, and we need to do that in our community is just take pride in it by picking up litter mm -hmm. and advocating for that. Mm -hmm. So um, I had um, reached out to Marissa last night because myself and one of my neighbors aren't going to be able to make it to the daily grind for nine but we're going to do Klein and Hastings and parts of Hoop 7 as well. So we'll be out there with our farm boots and our safety vest and our pokers <laughs> picking up as well. Okay. question I had for you, Marissa and, and Angie, is how are you going to be getting the funds to purchase potentially land in the future? So we have a multi-pronged approach to that. And one is um, obviously being a, a private entity, we're not accepting any state or government monies. That's what differentiates, differentiates us from something like a conservation commission or a CPC here at Town Hall or an AGCOM that seeks to use town or government monies to, to purchase land and purchase APRs, which is a really common form of the conservation easement here mm -hmm. um, in Massachusetts. Uh, that's a great model. It just doesn't fit all. So for us, using private monies in the form of grant monies that we apply to from private foundations, there's a lot of money out there. Fundraising in terms of our community, we're going to have a membership model where folks can have an annual membership at different tiers. Um, we have a membership model annually that goes from $15 if you are youth or a student up to um, whatever you can donate. We're really trying to be accessible to everybody. Um, we're also following the model of other land trusts in Connecticut specifically because this kind of model, the town-focused model, is not really common in Massachusetts. You have Kestrel land trusts, you have Franklin. Those are very regional, and they also accept a lot of state money. We're not doing that. We're doing all of our own kind of fundraising. So what the Connecticut land trusts do is that they also work um, with businesses to procure funds from businesses in town and beyond, and they also work with individuals to procure donations. And then because we have the flexibility of working one-on-one -on -one with a landowner, we can possibly have an exchange where they might donate the land or give it to us at a very reasonable price and they get a good tax incentive. It's just different when you can work one-on-one -on -one with a landowner and also have concessions put into place in the deed that might make it a little bit more competitive for them, but also good for the land trust. Um, that's where government programs fall a little short. They have to have certain guidelines, obviously. You can't kind of flex the rules. Mm -hmm. um, that's fine, but we plan on operating a little bit differently. So is that how the Granby Land Trust works? Granby Land Trust works that way, yes. And another thing the Granby Land Trust does, and that's who we're emulating ourselves at. Right. right, I've always been impressed with the properties. Oh, yeah, exactly. And they've been a fantastic partner for us as well. They've kind of let us um, use their model and plan on kind of partnering with us in the future. Uh, they also accept... Um, Various IRA accounts, uh, you know, uh, memorial accounts, and those then those funds, those larger funds, get put into kind of a money market account, and they have a financial manager that manages that. So you know, they they oscillate from year to year, obviously depending on what they have in terms of 
um, costs, expenses, but they have a $3 million endowment presently. And that changes. Sometimes it goes down to less than a million, but then other years, depending on how the market goes. So it's also making smart investments with that money. So it's not just, okay, um, having big sales. I mean, we'll do that too. <laughs> well, every penny counts, but um, it's kind of that multi pronged approach that I mentioned. So I'm sure as time goes on, we'll iterate on that and see what works. Um, and you also have what, an informational program in June at the Brass Rail? Yeah, that's right. Is that coming yeah. up as well? Yeah, it's on the postcard. So mm -hmm. it's kind of like, um, and then we also have a logo contest too. Since we're brand new, we don't have a logo Right, the yet. logo. Yeah, so we're hoping to get lots of entries. Yeah. That's June 23rd at the Brass Rail. Yeah. And that's kind of more of a launch party for folks to come and meet members of the land trust. There's people who'd like to volunteer or get involved with the board. That's an opportunity to learn a little bit more about how we operate and um, yeah, connect with, with the community. I think I should have a little bit more because I forgot we are in need of a logo and a little bit more branding. So, so Kim, if you have any great ideas, <laughs> enter. <laughs> so. Any questions for Marissa or Angie? How long have you been working on this? Uh, since around the end of 2021. Oh, a bit long, huh? Yeah. Even a little bit of time. Research, you know, kind of looking at other land trust models, seeing what has worked in Massachusetts, what hasn't. And that's where we landed on the board and all that. Quite a few people as well. Yep, right now we have seven um, members on our executive committee. Mm -hmm. Angie and I are in that committee. So, um, yeah, we're, we're looking to hopefully expand that in the future because we are all volunteer run, and that's another way that we're trying to stay efficient, making it all volunteer run. So, we're taking on a lot of the work ourselves. Um, another thing that we're trying to do, similar to the Grand Blue Land Trust, and I'll plug this here as well, seeing that this is the EDC and there might be some cross-pollination is um, the way the Granby Land Trust also stays efficient is that a lot of their tasks are all volunteer run. So it's not just the board of directors that are all volunteers. Some nonprofits, you know, will pay their board of directors. They don't do that. We don't plan on doing that. Um, but they also, when they make calls out to have events or fix a property or build, say, a bridge um, across the property, uh, across, you know, some waterway on one of their properties that they steward, they make a call out to the local community and they kind of have a network of folks that range from attorneys that can help them with legal documents and deeds, real estate brokers, down to people who, you know, have, have skills in carpentry mm -hmm. and can kind of help build those bridges. So they try to really source everything out locally to volunteers who are willing. And it's also a way of just kind of building a little bit more connection and obviously doing some networking within, within your, um, within your scope, you know, within Granby. And for us, that would be within Southwick. So mm -hmm. hopefully we can also connect with local businesses because we do feel it's also a way for local businesses to maybe get a plug from us, that they are involved in something charitable, something important for the community. And at the same time, um, we benefit as well. So it can be, you know, one hand washes the other, as we say in Peru. Um, hopefully. <laughs> we say that here too. Oh, <laughs> great, great. So. Great. Well, I know, Jeff, you just came in at the last minute. Um, this is Marissa and Angie. They oh, are right. members, or founding Good members name. of the South Plan Trust. Okay. And they just gave us an overview. Do you have any questions? Um, we'll make the very end. Uh, no. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Sounds good. Well, thank you. Well, we'll definitely support you however we can. Thank you. And um, I know I'll be picking up trash this Saturday, and I'll be at the uh, June as well. Fabulous, fabulous. Yeah, and I know Angie mentioned we have some um, pre-designed routes, but if folks can't make it to those routes, uh, DPW is also collaborating with us, and they're going to go through town and look for rubbish bags that day until 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So if you're so inclined to... To clean up, but you can't make it down to the daily drying, just leave that rubbish bag out on the side because they will be going uh, through town from 11 to 3 that day and picking up any bags that they find. So um, hopefully we'll make an impact. Um, do you get involved in purchasing properties and keeping them? That's our goal. Oh, yeah, I've seen Franklin Land Trust, I think, and uh, something preservation, I can't think of what it is. Um, 
be so you, know, you help uh, you buy development rights and, and we're working trying to work for that yeah that that is our goal i mean right now we just started so we're trying to get our funding up and going mm -hmm. but that is the goal that's um, built into our charter and into our bylaws that we would acquire properties through direct purchase of the property by conservation easements um, on mm -hmm. the property and um, trying to figure out ways to conserve property through different modalities and, you know there's the APR program I had mentioned that and that works for some but it doesn't work for everybody so there are different ways of conserving property Granby for instance what they've done in some scenarios is that they've let landowners stay on that property and use it until the next generation so the farmer there gets to use it, gets to have their livelihood, but afterwards they know that it's going into conservation. So it's a way of letting folks in that particular example, it's still letting folks use the land, do what they got to do with the land to keep their livelihood going. Um, but at least they know, okay, afterwards, you know, there's some sort of arrangement made, maybe the land trust has purchased some of those rights. Mm -hmm. So then they can give that to their family members as some sort of inheritance. Mm -hmm. But we can work out customized plans. That's why we're private, because we have that flexibility to kind of work one on one with folks and figure out what arrangement is going to work best. Mm -hmm. um, I can imagine it's probably a problem with some farmers trying to turn to the next generation because I'm stuck in one farm in Huntington. So the family has been in a family for hundreds of years, mm -hmm. which is nobody to turn it over to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we'd rather somebody preserve it. And if we sold to a housing trust, it would be too big. Right, right. And, you know, another thing that Granby has done, and an example similar to that that you just referenced in Huntington, is that they purchased the farm and they've kind of kept it up and going. They also rent it to young farmers for a reasonable price. So that way it continues to be farmland, but it also gives folks who may otherwise not be able to afford starting their own farm, the means to kind of have their own ag business. So it's also, I guess, that's another kind of connection that you can. Um, help grow ag business in that way as well. So, mm -hmm. yeah, then that correlates with the agcom too. Right? <laughs> we have the agcom share here. It's all one big happy family. A lot of intersection can happen, yeah. you know, exactly. And, you know, we're also looking, again, we're a private non governmental entity, but we're looking to the master plan. And I know your committee is as well. So mm -hmm. I'm sure there will be a lot of uh, intersection in the future. It's part of our being on tonight. Everyone's going to get there. Okay. Ooh, that's exciting. Yes. <laughs> so, so I'm sorry if I missed this, but you're um, uh, incorporated as a 501c3. Okay, great. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Well, good luck. Thank you. Thank you so much. We're going to have a long time. That's great. Thank you. Yeah, this is a real good thing for the town. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm looking forward to partnering with, with you folks and other committees and other entities. And thanks for letting us introduce ourselves tonight. Mm -hmm. well, thank you. Likewise. Thank, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Take home well, some pretzels. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This has been very good. Thank you so much. Thank you. And likewise. I might need a packet. No, oh, I, I think we'll split that, sir. <laughs> thank you. They're very generous. Thank you. Thank, thank you so thank you much. Good luck with everything. Oh, thank you. Likewise. And enjoy the master plan work. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. Next, we have Bert Hansen, who is the chair of the Agricultural Commission. And you're going to sprinkle some joy here tonight, right, Bert? <laughs> Probably for the recording, I probably should say uh, 153 more mining load. Um, <laughs> yeah, anyway, um, yeah, we're we'll continuing the theme of partnership uh, at a recent ag meeting. Um, we've, we've been talking for several meetings already about the uh, our second annual Open Farm Day in August. It'll be August 8th, Sunday, August 18th this year. And, um, we we voted unanimously and with Inga there uh, to invite the ABC to, to be co-sponsors with us. Um, mm -hmm. Just to again that theme of partnership, uh, collaboration, and sort of model that for the town, I, I think I'll, I'll say. Um, and so if you would you know vote. You're ready uh, to to join us. We're also we're also going to um, formally invite the South Atlantis to also be 
post maximums. So I know many of the bases can be covered. Um, <clears throat> and so what that would mean, I mean, if you would like to, you could help us promote the Open Farm Day through your networks and your new website and, and the, the tools that you have. Um, we are, uh, we're going to need a lot of a lot of volunteers this year. <clears throat> we had 35 volunteers last year to be at the farms and have people, <clears throat> you know, um, and the stickers. Yeah, so there's a passport. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is what we designed last year. Was a passport. So we'll do some things very similar this year. We're hoping to, to increase the number of farms. We had um, eight farms and the historical society last year. Just um, and folks who who were guests. And, um, You've got this passport and then the mm -hmm. kind of sticker. Did you expand the time too? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Ten to four. I barely made it to all of them. Yeah. yeah. Ten to no, four to share. I heard that. <laughs> yeah. and, you know, because you go someplace like to find these stables yeah. and pony rides, you know, you're going to stay there longer than. Yeah, it'd be ten to four. And that's why we were in tears because we you know, need to do shifts. Rather than ask somebody to be in a farm you know, for six hours. Mm -hmm. And another thing we heard last year from the volunteers was that, gee, you know, I went to find you stables or I went to Calabrese or I went here and there. <clears throat> and he was stuck there all day. And you know, I, as a volunteer, wanted to go to some of the farms. So if we can do you know, two or three hour shifts, then the volunteers can go see some of the farms you know, as well. So mm -hmm. they, so, um, August 18th, Sunday. It's a Sunday, 10 to 4. 10 to 4. And we're also uh, going to try letting the farms have variable hours. They don't have to be open from 10 to 4. Yeah, that was a concern of these I right. farm. So they might be a big exception this year. They said, no way we can do more than four hours. <clears throat> they were so great last year that they got the prize for team spirit and matching t shirts. And, you know, Where was this? These I, they're on North Lawn Yard. It used to be the Tish. Oh, farm. yes, yes, yeah. I was up there. They, they took a ride. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. Doug Bolton was with me too. Right. Right? Yeah, we went up in the back and everything. Yep. Yeah, yep. yeah. <laughs> and they were nice. making ice cream out of you know, local, mm -hmm. local milk and um, butter. And butter and, and a, kind of a video, you know, history of the farm. So they really, they really got into it. <laughs> so I just want to give a little bit of background um, to this uh, as to why um, I've been going to the AgCom meetings. Um, as a private citizen last year, before I joined the EBC, um, I was going to the Economic Development Commission's meetings. And Bert had come to one of those meetings and had asked the previous commission if they would be interested in helping sponsor or promote this mm -hmm. Farm Day concept. And it stayed idle. I contacted Bert and said, as a private citizen, I think it's a hoot of an idea. Let's, let's take it to fruition. So and I said, yes, please. Yes, please. <laughs> so Bert and I um, started brainstorming and spitballing some ideas. Then I started going to the AgCon meetings. And before we knew it, my assistant at the time had designed this. Um, we were just really just starting to make this all come to life. And the event was, in my opinion, and Greg, you can chime in as well because you were one of our volunteers. It was it was a success. We had things so well planned at each of these farms regarding safety. We before that even we did a training night with all the volunteers, starting off with smile, greet the people, 
um, I put together these farm bags for each of the farms that had the safety vests, it had the stickers, it had passports, it had pens. Um, it had everything that they needed to do to execute that farm as well as possible. We gathered history on the farms too. So we, between Bart and I, we visited all the farms to make sure that they were right on point and we knew where people could go, where they could not go on other people's property. And we had on an average at a couple of the farms, there were over 400 participants. It was a great day too. Yeah, yeah because Serena, she visited, um, yeah, she yeah. visited my place, the yeah. Pineview Stables and we were nonstop for know. four hours because we're not only doing pony rides, we were doing Arabian rides for adults in the arena and people were just they were just so happy you were at cowards a lot of people a lot of people from Connecticut oh we had people from all over right right heard about it (laughs) and we created some really cool signs that we still kept and we didn't put dates on them so they could be reused so when I attended them uh, about three meetings ago with the AdCom, and Bert asked if this would be something that we, the EDC, would be interested in, I said yes, but obviously we're going to need to vote on it because my yes doesn't mean anything. It's <laughs> all of us collectively. Uh, we don't have to give you any money, though, right? To spot to be a well, sponsor. That, that, that was a that would be a hundred dollars a piece. No, <laughs> no, no money. Yep, no money. <laughs> and, and what I had um, volunteered is that um, even if the EBC, as a commission as a whole, chooses not to want to be a co-sponsor, um, that I was going to be able to donate and probably find. 25 people to be volunteers because we want to be able to do it in two shifts Mm -hmm. so that we have an opportunity to go to other farms as well. Mm -hmm. Um, So this is an event too, where we're going to be putting our green dine Southwick signs at as well that are at list right on the bottom of it, sponsored by the economic development commission to promote our local restaurants so that's going to be our contribution as a sponsor, along with also potentially people volunteering. And like Mark, it'd be great if you and your wife wanted to volunteer for a couple of hours. We could have you both at one farm. Mm-hmm. So, and that goes for all of us. If anybody has others that they want to bring, do. I mean, I brought one of my girlfriends from Springfield, and she's she was at Pineview Stables mm-hmm. doing the the stickers. Mm-hmm. So, and I was bringing people back and forth to the barn. So we all can have our our space. But it was a great event. Yeah, and I really should say, Inga, thank you. I mean, Inga, Inga was instrumental mm-hmm. in getting this off the ground. It was, it was kind of three musketeers, Inga. Um, Marissa Coco Bergan, who was just here, and myself, yeah. who, who really spearheaded it. I mean, everybody, all the members of the Agriculture Commission, in some way or another, um, as we've been saying, this was exceeded all our expectations. <laughs> right. <laughs> One of my favorite example is um, the Solek farm, Randall Road. They thought, <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll get this a try. Right. We thought, you know, maybe we'll get 25, 30 people. They had that many in the first half hour. <laughs> right, and about he, 180 or so. Yeah. And Andrew's <laughs> so. a beekeeper, and Andrew was like, "Well, geez, do you think I should sell some honey?" And I'm like, "Absolutely!" And, and he um, went and got also um, a whole bee display so that he could show people how the colony works, and he sold all his honey. <laughs> and at um, Arnold's farm which is a, a Civil oh, yeah. War yeah. dated tobacco barn. And his wife uh, produces sunflowers. Dwight Arnold, yeah, during one of our meetings, was like, well, you know, okay, we'll participate. When we did our follow-up with all the farms as to what worked well, what could we do better, what are your thoughts? 
Dwight was saying, he never stopped talking for over four hours. <laughs> he was nonstop because he had people that were sewers back in the day when they were teenagers here in town, mm -hmm. sewing the tobacco nets. And he had displays of the sewing machines. Mm -hmm. And people were like, oh my God, I've worked here. <laughs> so it just was really a, a, a well-attended event. <laughs> so, so with the spirit of what we're doing with this conversation, um, would th would somebody want to make a motion to see about being a co-sponsor for the Agricultural Commission's second annual Farm Day? I move we be a co-sponsor for the <laughs> second annual Farm Day. Okay. Second. <laughs> okay. Roll call. Okay. Inga Hotelling. Yes. Regalia. Yes. Yes. Mark Pilgo. Yes. Jack Cody, yes. Serena Fuller, yes. Yay, there you go, sir. Thank you all. Very much. Anything else you want to educate us on about Farm Day this year? Mm, not at the moment. Um, we're starting to get into the nitty gritty you know, details of, of you know, trying to reach out to some additional farmers. And, you know, this year's you know, materials updated. We're doing a little outreach to uh, some other towns, like Granville, for example. Yeah. Uh, Granville School wants to, I guess they have a, an ice cream truck, for lack yeah. of a better phrase. Mr. Um, Brown has the cutest <laughs> little uh, unit that yeah. is propane, and he uses it at the Granville Harvest Festival and also for one of the car shows up in Granville. Mm -hmm. And I know he said he was wanting to bring it to one of our farms. Or maybe the historical society. Yeah, I was thinking there. We don't want to put them across the street from malicious. So. <laughs> no, <laughs> that, that might not be good. My thought with the historical society, too, and um, I know you've already connected with Mr. Brown, but he's a good friend of my husband's and mine. Oh, okay. But maybe he would be willing to donate a portion of his proceeds to the historical society as well. That might be something to look at because if he does partner on their property, that might be a good contribution back to the community. That's a great idea. Yeah, thank you. It would help them as well. Yeah, I think that's a trick. Maybe having them in there. Um, an added attraction. Yeah. Right. Uh, and it would be promoted on the passport as well, sure. which would drive people there. Literally, would drive people there. Yeah, well, there. it wasn't. It's a, in a prominent location. And there's a lot of interconnectedness with the farms. You know, here, uh, like we are talking about, the Eastside Farm it used to be the Tish Farm. They, um, it's 135 acres. They lease it out for hay for the woodgers and Granville. Mm -hmm. They feed it the hay to the cows and you can know, you know, Right. And, the, and Woodger's cows are the cows that are on the Scoop's property, which is where they get the milk. Mm -hmm. So it's, so, yeah. it's connect the yeah, dots. We still have quite a bit of tobacco. Yes. Yeah, it's like college and Yeah. A big she tobacco. Mm -hmm. up that's yeah. Dwight that's Arnold. Shade, that's shade. That's shade. Okay. Dwight's okay. shade. He does some shade in Broadly. Yeah. They're kind of related. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Such a nice idea. Yeah. Like What's that? that? He does the sunflower. So oh, yeah. Because what he does, he shears out and you cut them yourself, mm -hmm. and it's like 50 cents, and then you then mow the money. So they don't leave anything mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And when really cool. it was so cool at, at Open Farm Day, and I don't know if you experienced this, Greg, at Cowards, but when people would pull into Kindview Stables, I would see people in the front seat with these big bouquets of sunflowers. <laughs> because they had been to the, the Arnold's farm. Mm -hmm. So it, it was just a day that just brought a smile to everyone's face all day long. Mm -hmm. And the weather was phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And it will be again this year, right? Absolutely. Yes. We put it in an order for that. Good. <laughs> <laughs> so, so more to come then, but start thinking about volunteers who you might like to have come with you. And we can make it somewhat site specific so that yeah, there's your partner that you want to go to, totally fine. Mm -hmm. Whoever we end up having. Mm -hmm. 
You get to wear coveralls if you want and barn boots and funky straw hats. I was tweaking my uh, coveralls and my climbing stables hat all day. So it's it was it's a lot of fun. So bigger and better this year. Yeah. And uh, another course I could talk about this all day. We both could. Um, <laughs> the Westfield Fair is the same weekend. We're gonna we we were we coincided with that event last year, and we will again this year, just because August 18th is the day the farmers want to do it, and so it's for them. So of course that's what they want to do. Right. It's and we still have the 300 people, even though we're right. still there. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Great. Hey, thank you very much for for your support. And, uh, I, I like to come to these meetings when I can. And I'm, I'm guessing I'm going to be at several more to be between now and August 18th. They're all about the businesses and <laughs> okay. yeah. farms. Are the farms are business. They're a business. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So take a couple goodies home for you and Julia. Yeah, well, I'm, I think I actually might stick around for a couple more of your agenda items. Okay, sure. sure. No problem. No problem. For just a quick question here. Um, is there a new like logging operation in town? So yeah, I was going to ask about that too. The yeah. one over by Ray's. Yeah, that's on yeah. Mr. Yeah. Wally's property. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Every time I drive, it's by, you know, he's getting bigger and bigger. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, yeah, huge piles. Right. Of, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. My Lots. impression of what's happening with that is um, Mr. Wally owns that property. Mm -hmm. He also owns the property across the street that has the Westfield Brew on it. And I know he's wanting to expand his fields. Mm -hmm. So I, from what I'm assuming, and I'll get validation on it, he's clearing some of the, the oh, trees. Okay. And then we'll take those trees and sell them. Mm -hmm. The, the logs, the logs, because mm -hmm. they're very neat. I'm wondering the same thing. Yeah, very. Well, yeah, I go by there every day. I'm like, it's getting bigger. Now there's another pile. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah. I'm curious what. <laughs> yeah, he loves his fields, mm. and he's he's a farmer by trade. So. Okay, any other questions for Bert while he's talking about the outcome? Okay, great. So next in review, and I just want to make it a public notice on the recording too. Um, Mark Folkel is here and Jack Cody is as well. So we do have a form. So um, the EDP, uh, last Thursday, I listened to the, I, I participated with the recording. I didn't see you on there, Mark. I, you? I wasn't. I was okay. not available. Okay. So I found it extremely educational, and it's something that we can definitely bring here into our community because there was, the guest speakers were Common Capital. And Common Capital is a small business lender. They've been in business since 1990. They're based in the Holyoke area. And the president, Ray, and also one of his cohorts, Lewis, gave a presentation about what their claim to fame is here in Western Mass specifically, is being able to offer to small businesses, whoever wants to open that business, that they might not be the most desirable candidate for a business loan through the traditional methods, through going to a bank. This is what they do. Mm -hmm. And they really base a lot of their decisions on the person and also their business plan. So it's not really about their assets because most of these people don't have the assets that they need. Mm -hmm. Hence why they're going to Common Capital. They do coaching as well. They do. They do mm -hmm. business plan. And uh, advice and recommendations. Um, they were. They gave me some. They gave us some statistics where it's more character lending um, opposed to credit. And in just looking at 2022, they did 2.2 million in loans. Mm -hmm. 2023, 2.8. 
2024, 3.2. They're on track for this year, 2024, 8.3 million. It's, it's been a big jump. And really what they're facilitating that are looking at what's really promoting that growth is the fact that there's opportunities for people to open up a small business, whether it's a woman owned business or a minority owned business. They're, you know, the communities are really promoting mm -hmm. people to open up small storefronts mm -hmm. and to be creative. And they're just thrilled with how their business is growing. Um, in Hampton County, since they've been in business, they have done 132 loans in Hampshire, 31, Franklin County, 16, and the Berkshires, 13. So mm -hmm. not large numbers, but it's going to be a resource for us to be able to tap into when we are going to be able to start doing solicitation for other businesses in the community. Once mm -hmm. we put a tab on our website in regards to vacancies, here's the square footage, Anybody in the town locally have a creative idea of opening up a business. We can connect you to a business partner. Um, they're willing to come to a meeting as well and make a presentation to us. But I think at this point it might be a little premature because we're not ready to start the solicitation piece. But when we do, this would be a great avenue for us to look at. Would it be appropriate for a standing um, link on our website? Oh, absolutely. So we've got to, one of the agenda things, we got to fill out our website. Right. Once we have business listings, then we got to focus on resources. We've got kind of placeholders in some of the towns. So. Right. And I think that sounds really nice too. Like even a headline, like, you know, if you don't have the resources to start your own small business or something like that, and really get the attention of those people who, you may think that they, they, they just can't, like, I don't have the money. I don't have, you know, 30000 or 40000 or whatever it is to, to open a small business, but I have this great idea. And I've got the passion. But, yeah. I think, it was, I think it was Bill Gates who said something along those lines, that he would rather have somebody with passion than a college degree. Mm -hmm. I can't begin to tell you how many of the clients that I work with that will say to me, these are presidents of, of organizations, you know, if you find somebody who has that, and they'll say like that, <laughs> and I'm like, okay, now you have to help me help define what that is. <laughs> I'll look at somebody with that opposed to looking for the masters, mm -hmm. because sometimes they're so focused on the theory part of it, they miss the human part of it and the passion and the desire. So that's one of the things that really came across well, and they had in the presentation. They also had testimonials by some of the recent people that they've lended to. And it was so heartfelt. And you could tell that these business owners were just indebted to their services for giving them the opportunity to first share their idea, pitch it to them, to have them actually then embrace it. Now their rates are gonna be a little bit higher than a conventional bank, because there's more risk involved. Mm -hmm. But once they walk you through the process, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. So um, that's something to. Um, What's their name again? Common, Common Capital. Capital. You're out of Holyoke? Yes, yeah. Common and Capital. They work with businesses that are maybe successful on going, but in a cash crunch. I don't know the answer. Start? I don't know the answer for that. But they, they're. I, I can picture you know, people starting up and. We got lots of customers, but you know, we just can't right now. Can't meet our. And how much can they loan? They're probably not FDIC and They're SBA. They're an SBA, oh, SBA. Uh, micro lender, mm -hmm. and their website is um, obviously www.commoncapitalmass.org because they are not for profit. Mm -hmm. So, but. Just a, and, uh, a few, a couple of months ago, I received the, the most gorgeous flower bouquet, actually from Marissa. And it was from a company by the name of Willow and Moss. 
And I think I know all the South or the um, florist mm -hmm. in the this Western Mass area. I couldn't figure out who they were. And when I went on Common Capital's website, it's one of their new businesses that opened mm -hmm. up in West Springfield, right on Route 20, mm -hmm. in an old house that these people purchased and now has renovated it. So it's a beautification component of it. They're running a business out of it. And it was just the most charming, unique flower arrangement I've ever seen. And what was what's their name again? Common no, 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 no. Willow and yeah. Moss. <laughs> it's almost diagonally across from the um, hot spot there on Route Twenty. Oh God, the old. It's a, it's a little divey there. Chris, mm -hmm. no, it's up above, up above there. Oh, the, the Collins Tavern. Collins Tavern. Yeah. Most directly across from Collins mm -hmm. Tavern, who for years would not allow women to come in. <laughs> <laughs> that was even back in the eighties. Peter didn't know there. <laughs> so, um, so that I thought was very advantageous for us, and definitely a, a great plug for our website too. Then um, also, they um, it went to Zamara, who is uh, one of the VPs with the. Um, Economic Development Partnership. And there is a legislation push right now through the House and the Senate for food science grants. And it's they're looking at what's really going to be up and coming in our local area. Food science was one, um, advanced manufacturing, the precision manufacturing, and also green tech. So they decided to focus on food science. They're going to be partnering with um, UMass. And it's going to be a really big push for a food hub for mm -hmm. Western Mass out of UMass. So it's something that you might want to look into as well, Bert, mm -hmm. because we're looking at potentially $100 million being brought into Western Mass through the state to promote this food science program, which mm -hmm. would be agriculture. Food sciences. Well, food science, the way that they described it is looking at, okay, how are we going to produce food in the future? If we don't have as much farm land, how are we going to be able to do it? So it could be using more greenhouse applications, looking at more scientific ways so to produce hydroponics, food. So hydroponic. food production science food. as opposed to but there's food. also an arm of it regarding agriculture which is food production right which is food <laughs> production so so it's going to be all product based they're really promoting it for a lot of startups as well that might want to become farmers or look at how they can use their land as part of this program as well in regards to producing crops and able to link it to uh, local agricultural pieces. So it's something where she's going to keep updating. She sent me the white paper that they've got right now proposed to the Commonwealth. And um, hopefully within the next two months, they'll know if it's been approved. And if so, UMass Amherst is going to be the home of it. But it will extend through Western Mass as well. Or the white paper. So, okay. I'm send that to everyone. So, next on our agenda is we have a town meeting happening next Tuesday, the 21st. And it's going to start at 6.15. It's going to be at the high school. And I have made a request to the select board for us to be able to have a couple of minutes promoting our shopsouthwick.net business directory. Um, we're not going to be able to have those two minutes, but what we are going to be able to do, I made three copies of it for people's reviews, is we can have a table in the foyer of when you walk into the school. But in my opinion, 
that might not be the most advantageous way for us to hand out this flyer. I would like for at least four to six volunteers so that we can be on at least two to three on each side of the door when you walk in to the auditory or to, into the school to be able to have us pass this out to every single person that comes in saying, Everybody. we got a, we have a, de a directory. You know, we're starting a business directory here in town. Please, it's real easy. Take a look at this and, and use it later when you get home. It'll be the first leg of our continual push in promoting the site. Right. So um, Greg designed this. Um, it's simple. It's to the point. And um, I am going to produce them in color. So this is exactly what it would look like. One page, real simple. Um, what are your thoughts about participating with this next Tuesday? I mean, I'll be there. I'm yeah. happy to be there. Okay, yeah. I'll Thanks. be there as well. Okay, I'm pretty sure I can be too. Okay, so there's at least five of us. I'll check. It's, yeah. it's good timing because we gave businesses the deadline of today to submit. No. We didn't get as many as, you know, people are always procrastinating. But what I'm going to do, I got, um, see, I was up to 56, 56. I think. But I'm going to add 100, you know, that they haven't responded that I know will want to be in. <laughs> Make sure all the restaurants, <clears throat> all the retail stores, all the, the public-facing storefronts are in there. Mm -hmm. um, particularly through the center of town. So that's where, you know, by next Tuesday, we'll have 150 to 160 people in the listings. Mm -hmm. So it'll be respectable. And, and, you know, part of the effect of promoting it like this is those businesses who maybe didn't get in will say, whoa, that's right. I got one of those letters. And, yeah, you or have I have didn't. The, you I, have the QR code or whatever that code is on here, right? Well, just shop south okay. right. mm -hmm. I mean, we, yeah. I want people to be aware of what the, what it is. the redirect mm -hmm. is, what the, is it something easy to remember? And what we'll do is, is we'll create signs. We'll, we'll come up with a campaign to have this visible. Over town. We'll put it on the homepage of the, perhaps of the town website, certainly on our page. We'll, we'll do everything we can to do. Keep that out there because it's about shop local. It's a mm -hmm. benefit for the town. So everybody has a stake in this. The, the, the residents, business people, mm -hmm. town government, all of them have a stake in, in promoting the shop local. And we'll go through the survey of whenever when I passed out, um, which I think really helps set some priorities for us going forward responses to the survey so far. And what I'll do on Monday night at the select board meeting. I think we have one on Monday night. I'll double check. Um, but I will ask for permission to reach out to Chip Middleton to have this now put on the town website. And also, Jim, in regards to the town crier where the town prior is, in case anybody does not know, mm -hmm. in the Gristmill Plaza, which it will be, on, it's on the east side of the west, no, the east side of 10 and 202, and their parking lot next to Berkshire Bank is a town prior. It's electronic. Here's mm -hmm. what's going on mm -hmm. in town. So um, I'll have reach out to Jim about getting approval to do that as well. So and we've I mean, I'm sure you know this, but I just want to say it just in case you know you can get color copies made here in town hall and without having to pay for them. Oh I was gonna run them through my office. Oh mm -hmm. so yeah. um <laughs> but where would that be here? Is it upstairs in the land use building or land use room? The select board has a oh, color the, the printer. The select yeah. board right there so, by Lisa's office. Okay. 
if not for this in the, in the future. Good, good, good to know. So, do I hear a motion to accept the flyer and to distribute them at the annual town meeting on Tuesday, May 21st? Motion that we present, present them at the town meeting. Second then. Okay. Roll call vote. Inga, yes. Greg, yes. 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 Okay. Jeff, yes. Serena, yes. <laughs> so take a look at it too. If you haven't printed it yet, let me know. Right I right only right. printed so the three. Right. So if there's any change, I just did it in 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 Word. I'm just not a designer, but if you think there's something that needs fixing, the the concept of it is to make it super easy and clear. The headline, now you can get find any business. Here's how you can put it on your phone. You can search by entering a search word or you can put category. Here's what you get. I use Southwick in as an example because it's yep. right in the middle of town and it's got Southwick in the name and it's got yep. a very simple. And everybody knows it. <laughs> I think. And then say it's got phone numbers and websites you can just tap and go to, call or go to. And you can put an icon on your home screen so that it's always right there. And then in a few taps on your phone, you can be connected with any business you want or find their hours or <clears throat> find their website. So we'll tell them when we hand them out, this is like our, our new business directory. Our so first. You say our first. Right. Yeah. It's a, okay. it's a business directory. Mm -hmm. We're going to keep updated. We'll add, add to it. And, you know, they should have it on their phone. Um, they should have this on their phone, have it a, as a constant companion to, you know, you want lunch, you can type in lunch and it'll bring up all the lunch places. Mm -hmm. You can type in dinner. You can actually hit the search bar, hit your microphone and say restaurant or say anything you want. Plumber, electrician, mm -hmm. and hit enter and a list wow. of the plumbers, electricians will pop up in their phone numbers. Mm -hmm. So the meeting starts at 6.15. Mm -hmm. People are going to be there at least 30 minutes early. So my recommendation is we rally at the front door of the high school by 5.40, the latest. I'll probably be there around 5.30. There's going to be some people coming in early. I know Marissa. This is going to be having a table for the South Atlanta Trust there. Are you going to have a table there as well, Bert? Okay. So there might be other people. That's why I think if we're on the outside, we're going to be able to capture people mm -hmm. on both sides. So. Not, a, not a bad idea to have a dish of candy. <laughs> well, we're going to be standing. Oh, no, okay. we're just gonna, yeah, we're going to be standing. It'd be nice to post some of these right at the doorways to people's. I don't know. Whatever. We'll Ooh, we'll yeah. talk about it as we right. I'll be there at five thirty and we'll or see. In local businesses. Even just posting in local businesses. Well, I'd like to have signs, kind of semi permanent signs at some point where people can just mm -hmm. keep them up because businesses should want to promote this because it's easy access to the business. Mm -hmm. And free. And did you say this is gonna free. go on the town prior? I'm gonna contact you in middle oh, okay. tomorrow. Okay. So and it's see something like it. this, I know from being in marketing in your whole career, you need to repeat, repeat. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, reach and frequency are by words of you know, advertising. You, you oh, yeah. do a lot of frequency and you reach as many people as you can. And, and there are cheap ways we can do it. And, you know, eventually it gets through. So, so people say, wow, hey, this actually works really well. Right. Simple to, to find a business. Thank you for doing this. There is. It was, and it, we should also tell people so well, how much this costs. The ongoing is a forty dollar posting, forty dollars a year. Forty two. Forty two dollars a year posting. That's really the only ongoing cost. We're we're gonna manage the time. So 
say this isn't costing you much in taxes. Pretty good yeah. dollars. And we've already paid for it for two years. So we've been paid for it for two years. But the, yeah. I mean, and and for the startup, there was only a few hundred dollars in startup. Yeah. Exactly. Right. So speaking of the town meeting, um, if you go on the town's website and you go under um, select board and then town meeting for the 21st, you'll see a few documents that you can download. They'll have a literature in um, at the meeting as well. But I just want to bring mention that we are on the agenda. And this is for the special town meeting. And this one is when it's starting at 6.15. And it's regarding our revolving account, which is our gift account, mm -hmm. which right now has approximately $3,700 in it. So we are going to be, or I'm going to have to make a presentation for Article 6. And it's an amendment slash addition to the revolving account. As of right now, the revolving fund is in the Economic Development Committee, which it's a little typo, it should have been commissioned, but I'm not gonna freak out over that. Um, Department Board Committee, once again, economic. The fees, charges, or other receipts, where that account had, had generated from over the years, which, we didn't even know that we had until mm -hmm. Jack and I met with Laura, mm -hmm. the controller, when we first developed this commission. It came from program fees. What those fees were, and you can probably attest to this better mm -hmm. than I can, Serena, because I never participated mm -hmm. with them. You would host events at right. the at the ranch, at the ranch mm -hmm. talkers, and you would town hall. And we would, yeah, we did charge them. You know, the table. Yeah. And so those fees that were generated from those events went into this gift account. It also included any ticket sales that might have been at any of those events, donations, and any other fees that could have been generated by the Economic Development Commission. Um, you used to also do a job fair. Did yes, you charge did. people for the job yep, fairs? Did. So that's where this money came from. So when I spoke to the select board a couple of meetings ago, it was with Ben Coyle, our attorney, and the select board as to, well, what are your thoughts about this revolving fund? And my response was, well, we have minimal budget. We're becoming a robust committee. We have initiatives, but you're probably going to have expenses associated with it. So it'd be great if we could utilize this. Um, we'd also like to be able to ask some guest speakers to come in. Maybe the Capital Common Fund might want $20 or $50 to come to our meeting. Don't know. But I'd want to have that money is available to use it for the common good of the community. Question because it's not in a budget line, mm -hmm. it's not a line item, mm -hmm. it is a separate fund that was generated from years ago that never had merit. <laughs> I guess you could say merit to mm -hmm. it, it just was there. And there's no they, mechanism to spend to, to spend it. There's no ever, authorization to did spend. Did they ever spend any of it? The previous mm -mm. So you just well, I didn't know it. about it either. This is curious though, because oh. agriculture has a gift account. It's not as big as yours, but and we never had to go to town meeting about it. <laughs> so <laughs> this is because you're able to spend it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that well, how do you want to spend it? From, yeah. Yeah. Well, the, the issue, of course, is it's not taxpayer dollars. It's, it's mm -hmm. from other sources. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Well, Jack and I were as well <laughs> <laughs> because it's like, well, how can we utilize this money? So, what I'm going to be proposing, is in the, and it's going to be in the, the town meeting, is where for a revolving fund, 
there's a, an item for restrictions or conditions on expenses payable from fund. They've highlighted it as none. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be open for us to utilize. Mm -hmm. Other requirements or reports, none. And the fiscal year, this is going to be fiscal years that begin on or after July 1 of 2024. Mm -hmm. So, and the whole town has to vote on that. They have to vote. Make, huh? make sure we have a, an explanation that makes sense to the town. We don't want them to be suspicious and say, wow, we don't want to. Well, it has to be clear that this was not tax money. Right. And we just mm -hmm. want an authorization to spend this. And it's obviously going to be only for economic development. Correct. Just, Correct. just a simple authorization so yep. that nobody, you know, I've, I've seen people misunderstand the articles if they're not explained well and they, they go with things. Yeah. I think if we wrong explain way. it's money that's been accumulated for phase with charge, but it's just been accumulated. But emphasize this is not taxpayer money. Right. And we no, are going to spend it as the for way, the benefit of, yeah. of town business. As the way the Article 6 is going to read, and I've got it here in writing, to see if the town will vote to amend Chapter 25, 25-5 Departmental Revolving Fund Bylaw to include the following revolving accounts in addition to the existing revolving accounts. So clarification is definitely. Yeah, it's confusing. So you just need that's money. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So so that is going to be part of the we don't want to waste time annual all meeting. people call, coming up to the microphone and yep. <laughs> giving speeches and I'm surprised you have to dance the vote in there. Mm -hmm. yeah. yep. So okay, so that is Oh, and I've got my email from Celeste regarding not having the two minutes, but one of the examples that I could bring to this, depending on how long, because it's only a two minute verbiage for me to communicate it to the community, um, I could use, I could also possibly plug, such as our new directory, our business directory, mm -hmm. which um, is not going to cost the taxpayers anything other than a renewal fee of forty some dollars every year. Yeah, sneak it in. Yeah, and they let anybody talk for two minutes. We should yeah. be able to. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that's the flyer slash town meeting um, item number four. So, um, item number five, um, Amber Bach has resigned from the Economic mm -hmm. Development Commission. She uh, reached out to me last Sunday and then sent a letter to the select board as well. Um, she now has a full-time position in Springfield at the courthouse and um, she's involved with her family. She also just found out she's gonna be a grandmother. <laughs> And after working a day in the courthouse, she's been averaging 15,000 steps. And she's spent by the time the night rolls around. Yeah. Yeah. She's doing real estate. Yeah. Too. And she's doing and real estate over. as well. Yeah. And, that, and her company changed over as well. So she's been on the commission for, gosh, you and her were on it for what, about wow. nine years? I think I am nine or ten. She's probably like six or seven. So, so it's um, it's a decision that she's made. Um, I offered if she wanted to come tonight and tell you all, and she felt that it would be best just for me to, you know, mm -hmm. let you folks know that she has resigned. Um, that means that we have a vacant spot. So we still, under the guidelines, have to have a quorum of five. So um, renewals for applicants are going to start the end of June into July. I did get approval from the select board last week that if there is an applicant that we have or that we know of that we feel would be a really good match 
for our group, let us know <laughs> and start talking to the person sooner than later. And we can always have a, an exception where they can be um, appointed and then go through the process with the select board as well. So we do have a, a vacancy. <laughs> Any questions? Okay. Um, open farm up. Dave volunteers, as I said earlier, we're looking for 25 members <laughs> from from our group here or people else that we know out there. One, one quick thing on that that I meant to mention before, they can be teenagers. Yes. Last year we had 11 National Honor Society kids. Mm -hmm. So it's okay to yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and after Open Farm Day, Bert and I went and met with Maria. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what's her name? Yes. The, <laughs> the, she is the, Marianne. yeah, Marianne, Marianne, the chair of the National Honor Society. Mary Margiani. Yeah. Yes, Marianne. at the high school. And we were there before the school even opened. Right. <laughs> and knocked on all the doors saying, we're supposed to be here at the first seven o'clock. And we presented to all the National Honor Society students a gift card from Dunkin' Donuts and just thank them for their willingness to, right. to come. And they were really great contributors. You had how many at Coward Farms? It was over 100. Right, but did you have a National Honor Society oh, student? Volunteers. Yeah, we had, we had two. two and they made up signs even was and was that on tenant on the... Yeah, yeah. some of them... Just, you went up to the road and mm. held up signs. Like there were like it was a car wash. <laughs> yeah, because they need to do their community service in front of there. Yeah. Right, right. So <laughs> we're definitely going to tap into those again this year yeah. to get yeah. more of the students. So um, so that's what I have right now for new business. Um, I do want to hand out to everyone. I copied the economic development action plans for the master plan. And okay for, for the opportunity. Best to Juliet. Well we, we need a member. <laughs> I already asked him. Oh you did yeah, we walked in. <laughs> oh take a couple for you, Juliet. <laughs> Thank you. Good to see you. Thank you. Thanks for if you want me to send this to you electronically, I will, but this is our ownership of the master plan 2040. The, the full master plan is available. Um, it's, so. yep. Yeah. yeah. But this here, I wanted to just yes. have everyone have a copy of what our marching orders are going to look like. I also have for everyone, we have a new handbook, Town of Southwick handbook. And when I put it through the copier, it stapled up here, but the content is exactly where it needs to be. Um, you do need to review it and then sign the first page and submit it to the um, town clerk's office. Mm -hmm. is, there, is there a deadline? Um, it's been effective as of April 1st. I've reviewed it. It doesn't have a deadline, but my recommendation would be do it sooner than later. Mm -hmm. And if you don't want to drop it off at the town clerk, just bring it to our next meeting and we'll make sure that it gets upstairs mm -hmm. where it needs to be. It's not that intimidating when you actually do look through it. So it should not take you too long to, to review the requirements. So those are my <laughs> yeah, those are my handouts. Okay, so for old business, Greg, update on Shop Southwick directory. Okay, so I'll have a copy of survey results. I put it underneath the folder in this place. And let's start just by going through this. First, I'll I'll say we had we sent the solicitation out to probably 480 total. We mailed, we, we, Inga and I personally delivered 
to everyone we could reach on the whole corridor of Todd's Highway from Westfield to Connecticut. And then we mailed all the rest, you know, then we, we couldn't. We gave them a deadline of today, but yeah. people are procrastinators. We've got, as I say, let's say 54 or something like that. But I'm going to add another 100, and we'll continue to get people coming in because they can. I'm going to take the big button off the site before Tuesday. Because once we start promoting it, everybody, I don't think, will be confused by seeing that big free business listing. Mm -hmm. But there's a menu item that's free business listing. So they can just click on that menu item and mm -hmm. sign up at any point. But the the website will start with just shop sub with information point search or pick the category. So just the idea is with a few taps on your phone, or you can use it on your laptop if you wish. So these are the from the responses I had to our survey questions after the listing, we had the four survey ones. And uh you know, in, in one sense, I'm surprised that that they were generally positive toward town government and business environment. Um, there, it's only one who answered very slightly responded much worse. Than it the same person. I'm I'm going to keep that anonymous, but you know, I could figure it out, but I'm not trying to figure out who's. You say more. I, I look at just the summary information. I mean, it's it's there in the spreadsheet, but I'm just looking at summary information. The goal here is to this is a baseline. I suggest we do the same survey a year from from now mm -hmm. to all of the people we have email for and see if it changes. And the, the goal would be to improve it. Um, the one piece of good news is pretty much everyone who responded so far gave us their email address. So we do are building a contact base. And I think our first message going out, maybe next month, we should send them the results of the survey, the percentages. Just let them know. Mm -hmm. Hey, you, you filled it out. Here's what y'all said. Mm -hmm. I won't give the counts. I'll give the percentages for each. Mm -hmm. I calculated a weighted score for these first three questions so that we could more easily compare the results from year to year. And the way that I weighted the score, if they were 100%, they would have answered very quick to respond, like in the first question, they would have answered the most positive one 100% of the time. That would be 100% positive. If they answered very slow to respond 100%, it would be at minus 100%. So that's the scale from minus 100% to 100%. I waited fairly quick to respond at 50% of the count of the percentage and fairly slow to respond at 50% negative. So the, the formula is, if you were to take these percentages, it's 40% times one plus 48% times 0.5 minus 10% times 0.5 minus 2% times one. So that's the weighting. Mm -hmm. And it, it gives you a scale. And what I would say is we should aim to have these upper ones at 75%. At that would be my my goal to get a weighted average of 75%. Because that would, and you could achieve that by having uh, half the people say very quick to respond and the other half say, or very and fairly. If you had half saying very and half fairly, you'd have 75%. Or if you had, you know, even more saying very quick to respond and a few negatives to subtract from it, you still could get 75%. But that should be, I mean, kind of a stretch goal. Mm -hmm. um, 
I think it'd be nice to have a higher score in the third question. So. Oh, yeah. We, we have an identity <laughs> issue. <laughs> yeah, we definitely have an identity <laughs> issue, and we have an opportunity to help um, improve the town's perception as, I mean, business's perception um, of the town being more business friendly. Oh, absolutely. And and here, this the weighting of that zero percent is, you know, the the yeah. last two questions right. just exactly offset the positive yeah. from the first two. <laughs> and and some of it could very well be just a communication issue. Mm -hmm. um, out of curiosity, did many people opt out of receiving emails? Almost none. Beautiful, almost not. because that gives us the opportunity to talk about things that we're doing and to let them know about things that are going to happen. Maybe even you know the success, like we've got you know the the big promotion um, around um, uh, you know promoting the restaurants and such and people coming in for the WIC, right? Mm -hmm. And if we start to see some positive results from that and some good feedback, even anecdotal feedback from some of the businesses that we could insert into a little communication this is what your economic development commission is doing yeah, for I you do. i'd like to be yeah. on a schedule of, of monthly communications yeah and i bet you'll see that number improve. absolutely and we will we'll have lots of things i mean yeah. when we do the farm day we'll, we'll talk sure. about that we'll talk about events we'll draw their yeah. attention every time we add a new event to the website we'll draw their attention to it in an email mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, We'll make them brief. We'll make them yep. relevant. I mean, with email, the only emails that people get annoyed with is if the frequency is too great or if they're not relevant. Right. Right. But if it's if it's occasional and it's highly relevant, mm -hmm. they love getting it. So that's something that we'll talk about. Yeah. Who would like to? help with that kind of thing. You know, I'll research what kind of, yeah. whether it's constant contact or you know, sure. one of those programs. Mm -hmm. You know, the other was. the other thing we could is to announce, you know, new businesses. Oh, yeah. definitely. Absolutely. You know, because oh, yeah. then they see that, hey, you know, okay, this mm -hmm. is good. We're, we're uh, bringing more, um, more, more businesses in, into it. Yeah. Or even yeah. anniversaries. Well, that's why on the restaurants, I want their anniversary dates mm -hmm. so that we can promote that and then expand it to other businesses as well and do a highlight on our website that month. Mm -hmm. And depending on what other source we have, maybe the town crier, put it on the town crier, visit Tucker's. We're celebrating 25 years mm -hmm. this month. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. So... And, and this is it can snowball. There's enhancements we can do to this directory too. This plugin, I'm so pleased. It's a free plugin to WordPress. <laughs> they have a paid version, but there's so much functionality just in the free version. It's great. It has the ability to put in images too of each of the businesses, mm -hmm. which you know it could be just the you know their street view, sure. or it could be even more. What I would love to see is get a picture of the ones that have local ownership, mm -hmm. a picture of the owners to emphasize these are your neighbors that run these right. businesses. Mm -hmm. Look how friendly Pam is. You've got to come in and <laughs> to her coffee shop. Hello. This coffee is her passion. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but, but kind of the humanizing piece for mm -hmm. For the small business. So yeah, that's exactly how Yelp is too. Like you have to have a picture of yourself. Like I, I have to put my picture there. And then if you want your logo for your business, that's premium. You have to pay for that on Yelp. Just FYI. Well, we can also add logos if, if and the, and no charge. Mm -hmm. No charge. Yeah. I mean, this that's the whole idea of this yeah. business directory is free, so we get yeah. sure. ideally a hundred percent participation because. There's no reason not to be in it. Mm -hmm. Doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. It just people are they they don't have the vision. They procrastinate when they see it's real. Mm -hmm. 
and and that it's easy and that's part of passing these out mm -hmm. at the meeting. It's a way to sure. to get it launched. And then a real interesting part of the survey are the priorities that they have. As I expected, I knew this would happen, certain priorities come to the top. And more than two thirds had their priority is to go on ongoing by local campaign around our shop software website. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of support for that. They appreciate understanding. And these percentages are based on people who responded um, divided by the number of responses, number of people who checked this one. So almost 70% of the people who responded checked this one. And then the next Big one with over 50% is press promote South of his great recreational destination prospects from all their weather area. And about a third exploring the possibility of the Chamber of Commerce and frequent dissipation is, is tied with them. Now I have a thought on just throwing out an idea how we could fulfill the second and third in one. Shop. What would that be, Great Town? This is based on something they do in the Hill Counties. They have something called the Jacobs Ladder Business Association, and they produce annually a big map of all the Hill Counties. And it's marked on the map recreation, trailheads, and boat launches. And then for everyone who belongs to this business association, they get also their business on this map. And the listing, and it's all numbered and color coded. So you look in Huntington, there's you know, numbers here, and you look it up in the listing, and you see the business and all their information, their phone and website, and everything, all on this big map that people will save because. It's also a recreational destination. Mm -hmm. So we did have a map like that because I have it in the foyer of my office. Mm -hmm. We did have, and it was kind of cute with the different right, businesses. But, but one of yeah. real big one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you see those have a lot of like in Manchester when you yeah. go visit mm -hmm. yeah. the area. They have those really yeah. colorful. Oh yeah, no, I've seen those all maps. around. But, yep. but we, the idea of this, the way they do it with Jacob's Ladder is. You have to join the business association to be on the map. So I'm proposing this as an alternative to a quote chamber of commerce, which always sounds like an outdated term. The business association is. We have that. I was on it for like 15 years. They had this band. <laughs> anyway, but you give them a very clear benefit in in Jacob's Ladder. They charge $95 a year. Go into that. They get their listing on the map and, and a number of other benefits. They have a website that shows the benefits they get. They also get the ability to exhibit it at the Chester and Trial on Saturday. They, they have they get a 10 by 10 plot they can set up the little tent and the table and promote their, their business at their as part of their membership and you know some other benefits. But that would be a way to finance, mm -hmm. you know, a map like this, which you want it to be impressive and large. And then they distribute it everywhere that the um, brochures or you know, sightseeing brochures and all the places. So it's around and you come up with Southwick attractions and you know, destinations, Southwick destinations. Without a zoo. <laughs> yeah, not that one. <laughs> you don't know how many people. Oh, I know. Yeah. We, we at, least one, at least box. once a week. Where do you live? <laughs> South of Oh, it's true. Yeah. If yeah. That's yeah. South yeah. wind <laughs> move to. Right. Move here. <laughs> We could that would maybe we have a plot of land that we could put the zoo on. <laughs> yes. Southwick's but, in Southwick. Right. <laughs> <laughs> So but that's, that's a great idea, right? But, but it, it fulfills that second and third priority right. that people mm -hmm. want to see it promoted as recreational destinations. So mm -hmm. on this map, you put, we've got 
bike trail, parking for bike trail, mm -hmm. parking for the New England trail, uh, boat launches, mm -hmm. our mm -hmm. motocross location, get all of those in there so people want to save things. Right. But then it also has all the restaurants and businesses, maybe color code in <laughs> global circles and you know, red might be restaurants and uh, blue or other businesses and, and then you have the, the recreations but you make it really colorful and professional and impressive and you finance it by businesses. by businesses and make it a membership you join the Southwick Business Association you get Yes. With your fee, you get on the map and we'll come up with a bunch of other benefits that you get from being in the association. And I'll, you know, you can go to the, you know, I'll send a note on the, the, the website for the Jacobs Ladder is kind of a model. And they're just, they just printed a new map um, in the last few days. I'll pick up a bunch of them bring them to the next meeting a sample of their map. Their newest one, we just they've done it seven years now, so it's been popular and successful. I'm sure it's grown significantly during those seven years too. And this is where we don't, it's not, we're not going to have to be recreating the wheel. Right. As no people Marissa, are yeah. working on this, so I'll get all right. the inside information right. on how to do it. As Marissa demonstrated with the Suffolk Land Trust, they mirrored Ramby. It's been successful. Why have to recreate something like that? Right. Successful. We have an advantage so, right. over the, they have to bring together, I think they have 15 pounds or something. And, you know, we can get more businesses in one town than they have to 15. Right. And we might even want to incorporate because I feel it's important for us to extend out to our sister communities for our high school, our regional school district. Granville and also Tom possibly could be part of that as well. Yeah, I not a lot of No, there isn't, but <laughs> whatever there is, why yeah. not promote it as well? Yeah, some nice recreational things. Yeah. So and when we did the map short. for Open Farm Day, it already highlights all of our walking trails. So we already have right, some of that information. Right, this will be much It'll be broader. bigger scale. Oh, of course, of than, course. That'll be, you want people to, to save it. Hey, you can put it up on their put wall. Put up on a wall, definitely. You, you want to make you it. Start, you got to start it. Yeah. So that that fits with the idea of the priorities that they, the businesses identify, mm -hmm. and we can finance it. So my thought about this data, Greg, is let me confirm that there is a select board meeting on Monday. And I'm, I'm hesitant that there isn't because of the annual term the meeting being the, the next day. Mm -hmm. Okay, Diane's on. Diane, can you hear us? Is she muted? Muted. Yes, ma'am. Diane, is there a select board meeting on this coming Monday, the 20th? Nope, I sent you a chat. No meeting on Monday. So what we could look at. Thanks, Diane. Yep. What I can do is um, see if they can put us on the agenda for the following week. And we can present the data to them. Yeah, we'll have more complete picture then. Right. Yeah, that that'd be nice. I'd like to to right to play because up. we we you know that they, they've let us know what they would like for us to be able to do, and this is good data points to bring up as our baseline. Yeah. The other thing I want to mention is I've been able to incorporate the full suite of Google Analytics into our website. So I was able to connect it free still, <laughs> um, but it can. I'll be able to track traffic, not only the volume, but practically by the hour, where it's coming from, what pages they go to, all of their links, how long they stay, the average session time, you know, they, they have 
engagement measures. They they have engaged traffic versus people that just come and, and leave. All of those things we can track. Is this AI now? <laughs> oh, this this is something Google Analytics has been running. Yeah, I know. I know. I've heard of it. They just they just launched an, their fourth upgrade of it. It's mm -hmm. GA four. I think you just call it G4, but it's it's a very thorough way of of tracking your traffic, which mm -hmm. is important to know if you're trying to sure. you know it's not worth doing a website if nobody comes. Right. Right. So we're gonna oh, yeah. really focus. That's why we've got to advertise the shop Southwick and the other things to our our mailing list so that we can show. You know, we'll be able to present to the select board and whoever else, you know, here's the traffic to our mm -hmm. site. Mm -hmm. It's not and enough to have a site, you gotta have traffic. Right. And I love the fact of this kind of data to be able to show them what people are, their perception in our community already. Yeah, and we've got to show the change over time is the right. real key. We've got to right, exactly. That'll be the effectiveness of our the justification for our committee if we can make uh, these numbers improve by the things that we do. Mm -hmm. And that we do the things that, that people actually want to have done. Right. So I don't see us having a chamber. <laughs> so but I, a business I, association. But a business yeah. association could be a bit of a spinoff once we are able right. to have well, one of the things that I can see us doing in the future is having a forum with the businesses. Yeah. That would and be say, okay, now we're not going to develop a chamber, but what about a business association? Right. And here's the, some of our ideas centered around that. What are your thoughts? And there were 22% said they a business forum. Mm -hmm. Well, that was mostly focused on mm -hmm. resources and funding. But uh, yeah, we'll we'll have communication. Um and and People will know who we are. Right. <laughs> yeah. So we can kind of be the convener um, of a couple of things. One is, you know, a forum where we do invite um, the, the state in and perhaps, um, you know, even the uh, include folks like, you know, Common Capital. Right. And, and have some type of, of forum um, where uh, the folks from the state uh, can uh, share, you know, some of the... Uh, opportunities that they have for businesses uh maybe there's somebody from the sba and then um you know folks like common capital uh, mm -hmm. and and that that would probably be a fairly easy get and then um maybe we have um you know periodic sessions with businesses uh where we can you know talk about things that are of interest uh, to businesses uh, in town, um, you know, keep them advised of what we're doing, get their feedback, um, and, um, you know, do that on a, on a regular basis. And in some, some type of forum format, that would be kind of a de facto mm -hmm. chamber where we're not doing mm -hmm. the fluffy stuff, but we're doing the things that are really meaningful. And it would be, it gets right down to the you know, meeting we yes. do will probably be a segment of the businesses because they're so diverse. Yes. What is relevant to a retail or sure. a service, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. home-based or, right. you know, their manufacturer, they're all yeah. very different. But, right. Um, and when you review the the information I gave you regarding the master plan, you'll see that that's one of the initiatives. Mm -hmm. So what I really am getting excited about is listening to the, the spitball ideas here, mm -hmm. and it's right in tandem with where we're going to be taking the EDC. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So this is exciting. Right too. Yeah. yeah. So anything else, Craig, in regards to the website and directory? One thing I, I wanted to mention, I noticed that in our eating directory, the online version, it's not okay. Here's this is not an endorsement of any business person or organization. Did, did we have some legal counsel that told us to say that? And do I need to put that on the directory? I just took it right from the it was the from the original resource. one so that Mike know. McMahon had. So I'm not sure. And why do we say this is not an official town publication? 
It was on the original. It was on the original format that Mike had. I would have to ask that question to the select board. Do we have to include that? We have to include it. Well, a better question is what do we need to include? What right? What, yeah, let's what not say yes. Yeah, down? if you know, if, if you're consulting a lawyer, right. they'll say, okay. yeah, put a hundred different things in there. I mean, it's I can see to me the only one that I could see that's important here would you know there's no implied door, endorsement. endorsement to any of them. Want, no. You don't want somebody right. I had a bad experience. I got it from your directory and no, this was just a directory. It yeah. wasn't an right. endorsement. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I am putting at the bottom, and you'll see it at the bottom of the categories. I did put it, you know, thank you for for supporting our local businesses who serve us and provide jobs and pay taxes. And pay taxes. I saw that. That looked really so good. I put that right at the bottom. I think that's, that's awesome. a, yeah. mm -hmm. a good thing to say. Mm -hmm. um, Okay. I'll and on, I did find it not responsible for errors. I found two small errors in this, and I changed in the website. I don't know if we're printing this. They're, no, they're I'm not pretty, printing them. Okay. It was just subway is at 535, not 635 College Highway. And, and the website for Freshfields Cafe had the old Smith spelled. Right. Martin picked so, up on that yeah. too at Southwoods. Um, but other than that, you know, we'll, I, I would like to ask everybody go through the website, get familiar with it, mm -hmm. because I'm sure we're going to want to talk about what the next that? meeting, how to fill it out and have divide up the, the tab. I can, I can put the information in. It's really easy to, to do. And if anybody else wants to be an administrator, it's not a hard thing to do. Although we don't want to have too many where we're, it's hard to communicate, but it's fine to have a couple and or to divide up in certain pages. Maybe somebody manages an event page and they can enter that directly, but they don't do the other pages. Let's spread it out, spread out the, the tasks and maintaining the website because <laughs> we want to. We yeah, want it I to be. I'm not so confident to do that, but <laughs> you can it's, learn. This Serena. WordPress is so easy. Is it it's easy? just like editing a document. Is it? Okay. It is so easy to do. We have but a I... lot of confidence in you, Serena. You <laughs> spoke up. I'm a quick learner. <laughs> You're it, Serena. <laughs> and you just you just get a page that comes up that looks like the website, although it has yeah. editing functions. So you click on a block of whatever and you can just you know edit, edit the, the copy or insert like a block adobe. or add almost like adobe where everything's in sections you just modify in that section yeah they're they're blocks, blocks and there. some of the blocks are the directory is a block that ties into a uh an add-in a plug-in that that i manage through that plug-in but you can and images, there's a library of images in one section of the website. And if you put an image in, you put it into the library first. And then when you want to put it into a spot in, in the website, you just pull it out of the library. So obviously there'll have to be a tutorial yes, on obviously. that. And um, I'm sure Greg or Martin could help facilitate that. Yeah, I don't think we'll need Martin much to, so we won't have to pay that eighty dollars an hour. You know, we'd like to do this through volunteer labor so that it doesn't rack up, you know, a lot of our research editing time. And that's something that we all have to be really cognitive of. I know that we meet once a month, maybe twice a month, but there's with the initiatives going forward we're all going to have to devote some additional time during the month. I know that we all work, except for Greg, who this is now is becoming his his career. Well, I don't have full-time work. <laughs> no, I, you don't have full-time work, but you got a lot of stuff. Like I'm, a lot I'm of stuff that you're doing. Full-time anyway. Um, but we have to realize that it takes a, 
it takes a tribe, it takes everyone to make something happen. And once you take a glance and a and also a deep dive, you know, you're gonna glance and then you'll dive into it. The initiatives of the master plan 2040, we have we have some really cool things coming down the road that we're gonna be able to make an impact. This data here that Greg was able to pull out from just two weeks worth of results is telling. And I'm going to be really proud to have us present it to the select board as this is our, you know, a baseline. We're only going to go up from here. Right. And to be fair, this is a skewed sample, is what you call it, a survey a skewed sample. These are the, the first responders. Yeah. Some of the later responders may have a different profile than the first right. first adopters. First that has got to come from somewhere. <laughs> yeah, so but this is a starting point. Yeah. So, um, anything else about the website or directory, Greg? I also want everybody to put this on their phone. To put put it on the home screen of their phone, and if you have trouble, we'll help. I'll help them because we want everybody in town to do that. So we should do it too and get familiar with how easy it is. Look up businesses, mm -hmm. use the search function, use the category function. Mm -hmm. um, just get get comfortable with using it so that you can be a, an ambassador for the site <laughs> and tell all your friends and neighbors and <laughs> you know, promote it. Spread the news, spread the news. Have, tell them to tell their friends. <laughs> So any Good questions job. regarding the yeah, director? Great job. Lots of work. Yeah, yeah. I say we great job. Right. And it was fun walking the town. Passion project. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, it's it's been um, a main initiative for since October. Mm -hmm. So, but when Greg and I walked the town, it was two Fridays ago. And we got absolutely no negative feedback. Good. Good. It was really well received. But some of those people still haven't put their information in yet. Right. So like, well, the majority of the restaurants. Yeah, still yeah exactly. Well, it's, yeah, yeah, I can see that. And we, the first one was New Main Moon. Yeah. You know, popped up right in the first day. They uh, put it in the, the day. Well, that they we did. That was yeah. the first respondent. What, yeah. And the woman I spoke to, I don't think she even really understood what I was she, saying she, to her. Yeah, yeah. But I was thrilled that later that afternoon when Greg and I talked after hours that New Main Moon had already put it in. So, yay. I personally <laughs> made sure the Daily Grind you know, got in. So that was one of the first ones. Yeah. And then we had this Kangamon cafe or whatever it was. Whatever this place they, is. <laughs> they <signed up> right. <laughs> I hear it's new in town. <laughs> so okay. And then then we but we've had a number of others. We got some I got the summer house today, I think finally. Yeah. It came through and we had the South and the South again. again. And the Crepe Sea House. Yeah. So they're they're slowly so we're, coming we're, in. Oh cattle and I know we know, and I hand delivered it to the new store manager that day when Greg and I were walking the town, um, because Melissa, who's used to run it now, is running the one in Westfield. Mm -hmm. So, so that's where we can, you know, we'll just wait a couple more days, see what happens. Worst comes to worst, I just smile and dial and say, "Hey, what's going on?" And I put so. in, you know, I saw that we have. Dining guide here. We had the Brassville Meeting House. I put that under catering and events. If that's okay, the same Perfect. thing with yep. the Westfield Brewery. I put it under yep. catering and events rather than restaurants. I right. want people to. Mm -hmm. make yeah, because Greg and I spoke to Sergio um, the day that we were walking the town. Um, Sergio is the one who runs the Westfield Brewery, mm -hmm. and he was there with his manager talking about whatever they were doing for business and. He was absolutely thrilled about this directory because now they're more event focused. Mm -hmm. So that's where we shared with them any events, concerts, things that you've got going mm -hmm. in that's drawing masses of people. Mm -hmm. You'll be able to use our site as a platform for that as well. So, but thank you for It's been great. So, okay. So going on to our old business, 
vacant retail properties. This was an initiative that Amber was going to run with. Um, is there anyone who would be willing to look at what we have available in town? Um, the reason why I'm asking is because I did speak to John, um, who is on, you know, with the planning board as a um, as an associate. He's not a, an elected member. And when I asked him, how would I be able to get a listing? He said, there really isn't one. Mm -hmm. So that's where he said, if you know a realtor, tap in on them. You know, all you have to do is go to loopnet.com and type in Southwick Mass and everything will come up that's available that's that's listed. It's either listed for sale or for, it's loopnet, L-O-O-P-N-E-T dot com. It was on the, the original website that I did for Southwick. So would we be able to create a link to yes. that? And yep. Would it like is... auto populate somehow mm -hmm. so that if we put something in, you know, like a on our website, you know, looking for so I'm gonna do it right your now. retail business looking for a location in Southwick, click here. So I'm click here. Yeah. Search This page isn't working. Thanks. Yeah, and we brought over, I haven't really dug into any of the other pages, but Martin brought over what you had. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if that was. I don't know if you included I don't know if you included it. I don't know if you included it. I'm sorry. I don't want to hide people up and close to eight. Let's, yeah. I'll look at this afterwards. Okay. Let's, let's move through. Okay. But anyway, you have the web address. Okay. And Perfect. I had it, I had a link for that right in the, um, right in the website that I had done. Okay. So we'll, go that route it's so easy. It's easy okay another item that we wanted to talk about was also a Facebook page um, there's already been one that was created that I had Jason Gare do for us and I know that I had shared at one of our last meetings the other communities, how they utilize their Facebook page, and it's fairly robust. So I'd like to see if we want to really talk seriously about creating one that we're going to utilize. What's fairly robust? They're the, the pages that some the of Facebook? the local communities yeah. have. And I have a hard time finding any communities well, locally around the local area, but it went it, it, it captured mostly Connecticut. Oh, and I think I got some out near Boston or something like that, but there wasn't a lot. And do those have a, just ongoing dialogue? Do you have you have to monitor it? That's well, see, that's where we don't want to have it be. Take the comments away. Right. We but that's don't the only want reason it. people go there is to well, see, that's, But this is where we would be wanting to use it to promote specifically um, events that are happening in town. Send them to our website too. Along with also events. So of all the ones that I had captured is no longer here. The ones that are, are robust are probably the ones which have lively discussions. Well, and a lot of them didn't have dialogue. It was really? just, here's what's happening in our community. And you don't know how many people are, you don't, don't see don't how many traffic, users, you know, the so. traffic piece of it. What I'll do for our next meeting is I'll make copies of these and we can look at them and discuss if it's something that we want to entertain. I I had looked up because it was going to be you, me, and Amber were we supposed to look up. Yeah. And I did. I looked up. I found a nice one by. Well, I found like four, and I think New Bedford was really the best one. If I can, yeah, I can send you the links to all of these. But I, like Holyoke, I found something for Hacks off Hadley, Wilbraham, but. I don't think they were much of those were much yeah, and I had a couple from Connecticut that looked really sharp. Yeah. So I think the only one I found that was decent was New Bedford. Where is it? Somewhere in Mass. <laughs> <laughs> Near the Cape. The Cape is where I was. Well, it's I was, yeah, Fall River. I was actually in New Fall Bedford River. today. Oh, oh, you we were? Have a client. Yeah, we have a client there. <laughs> South Coast Health. Uh, yeah. 
They have a nice website. Okay. Yeah. So I'll have a couple of examples. If you want to bring a couple of examples for the next meeting, that would be great, Pam. And um, initiatives. I know we had spoken at the last meeting in regards to what do we want to do next? Now that we've got the, the website launched and we're going to be building on that, that's going to be a work in progress. But what do we want to tackle going into the summer? Well, I think you can just look right at your list here that Greg created to see what's most important to the people and then kind of go from there. And I think crosswalking that to um, the action items. I think, you know, if we take a look at, at um, you know, the, the master plan action items and then, you know, <laughs> what, you done, what the businesses are asking for and kind of combine those would be. Right. I recommend yeah. we come up with maybe three projects that we want to that are doable that aren't right. just pie in the sky correct we can say here's something i think we can get done within a, a distinct period of time and their priorities and you know let's let's not be too broad let's right. be very focused on two or three initiatives that we divide up and and have you know people working on between meetings right because with the size of the commission we can do that comfortably and we've already seen some good results by doing it that way as well one of the things that greg and i spoke about the other evening was and that would fall into the master plan which is a shop local promotion or the shop local initiatives is making the town more user-friendly um for example looking at maybe establishing some more crosswalks in key areas of the community, say maybe between Village Pizza and the other plaza across the street, uh, looking at the amount of um, not only the crosswalks, but having, we were talking about time studies, drive yeah, I'm studies. i do some of that myself because I, you know, that's a pet project of mine is to do the crosswalks between intersections. Which they have in Westfield. It's College Highway. It's the same yeah. road. And they do it in Grand B as well. And you know, even the little, some of the little hill towns and places, and of course the Berkshires, they have beautiful painted crosswalks. And it and in combination with that, slow down the speed limit. Mm -hmm. uh, because it's, the state highway, do you have to get their permission? Well, what do you what are you thinking? Is they well, a study? Why wouldn't they? Permit it if they do it. In well, Westfield. I don't know. It's, it's a state highway. It's not anything else. They do it. That's the same highway in Westfield. And they mm -hmm. slow it down. Yeah. So, so I don't know why we couldn't yeah. get it done. I it, talked to Jason a little bit about it yesterday while we were standing out. He said he was in favor. <laughs> so it's, it's and I also impressive. asked him about getting accident that. studies, and he said I they should be able to provide that to me. So that's one of the research things I want to do is is get the accident studies because. There's a whole presentation we can make about speed limits in terms of safety, in terms of economic vitality, making it walkable, noise levels, you know, multi-use pathways. Some of it has to do with just changing the look of the street, narrow up the lanes, put bike lanes in, put crosswalks in, slow down the speed limit. People drive through more relaxed with the attention. It's more pleasant to walk around. It's horrible to walk around. It's horrible to cross that road. Oh, those here and they fly down the road. Oh, mm -hmm. they because you put it at 35 means they go 45 yeah. or 50. Um, it's way too fast. This is we're not a super highway. And what we're we were coming. hearing as well when we were doing our solicitation on Friday, on that Friday, um, was that businesses on one side of the road look at people that are trying to cross over and they get so yeah. frustrated yeah. that they don't so especially up in that russell tropical fish area and the summer house yeah there are three you know, at least three places three places where we can I see that being advantageous at the summer house right at the high point it's visible i'd have one down at the you know dollar plaza and over to the bike store and the other places and maybe one you know a little up in the other end but 
go at least two, if not three, between the lights. So there's crosswalks, obviously, the lights. But if you're at the summer house, you're not going to walk down to the light to cross the street. Which is what you're being forced to do, or take your life in your own hands and cross over. So that could be something for us to look at going forward into the into the summer. So, but with this data and with our action items and the paperwork that I sent out to you for the EBC, we should be able to come up with a couple of really good initiatives. Mm -hmm. So, anybody have any other business that they want to bring up? No? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Julie gave me the minutes of the meetings. Mm -hmm. And they're in everyone's packet, right? Mm -hmm. So I'd like for you all to review those. And then we can have an action item on the next meeting mm -hmm. and to be able to approve these. So that there's it gets us there's from September. Right. Yeah. So this is all, all of the meetings. And this will get us right up to snuff in regards to being in compliance. Mm -hmm. So if you can all take a look at those and then sign off and approve them, then we can put a motion through at the next meeting. When's the next meeting? I would like to propose that we meet in two weeks, and that would be on May 29th, May 29th, and it would be for just an hour from six to seven. How does that look for everyone? I'll, I'll have to look. I think, I think it's okay. Yeah. Which, if it's for me, we for a trip. Is it the Memorial next day. day weekend? Yeah, we for a trip the next day. And okay. But the, but I could say, I mean, I want to okay. hold just for me. Yep. Just and it would be, it would, like I said, be just for um one hour. And it would be an opportunity just to tie up some business. Mm -hmm and um, be able to have feedback as well from the select board meeting as well regarding the data points. So I just want to also, at this point, I'd like to adjourn the meeting. Do I hear a motion? I'll make a motion. Yes. Okay. So we, we can turn off <laughs> the video.